Today, um, I want to tell you about Ignaz Semmelweis, a Hungarian scientist from the mid 1800s. He's most famous for coming across the idea of cleanliness, of cleaning between working in a morgue, dissecting bodies, learning how bodies work, and then delivering babies. This was a training hospital he worked in in Hungary. There were less doctors at that point, so you tended to have to do a lot of different things. Now at the time, bacteria were not widely believed to be a cause of disease, because you couldn't see them, it was very hard to grow them, and the idea of what's called the germ theory of disease hadn't really come into prominence. And he didn't know about bacteria, he never thought that there was bacteria causing this disease. What he saw was some of his colleagues accidentally cut themselves while they were dissecting cadavers, and they came down with a fever. And this fever was identical in its symptoms and its severity as those that were going through the wards of the hospitals in the maternity wing. And he thought, well, if someone's getting a disease from this cadaver, they're then going on to work with um, pregnant women and delivering babies, and then they're getting the same disease. Maybe we should put some sort of clean step in between these. And he did, using chlorine, washed with chlorine um, solution. And he found immensely huge results. I wish I could draw you a graph. The instant, that the, the week that they began introducing this, the numbers of people dying of this disease in the areas where washing hands was taking place plummeted from sort of up here to all the way down there. It's the best graph I've ever seen when telling students about data. Wonderful graph. But his problem was he was really shy, basically. He didn't like to publicise his work. He believed in it completely. And he went from hospital to hospital and would introduce this as he went from position to position, and it would have the same effect. But it was only really people like his research associates and assistants that would ever publicise this. Now, at the time, not only did you have most of the world not knowing about bacteria or believing it, and gradually pockets of people like Pasteur and Robert Koch would prove these things, but obviously you didn't have the internet, so this couldn't be publicised all over the place. This had to come out very, very slowly, and lots of people didn't believe it. One of the reasons why is there's this Hungarian doctor is telling you that you're dirty, you're a surgeon, and you're dirty, and you're causing disease. And obviously at the time, only the very rich would go on and become doctors. It was very much a, based on how much money you had. So these people, these foreigners, telling us that we were dirty and that's why we were causing disease was incredibly frowned upon, was not believed in any way. I think now it's much easier. Now obviously you can go online, you can find a journal, you can see the latest articles. Back then, as I sort of tell the students, it wasn't that long ago, but a completely different world. When only certain people would believe in these microorganisms that existed, they would be almost like the elite who might send letters to each other discussing things so a few people would know, but the common populace didn't know anything about it. It may not sound like rocket science now, the idea that you, you've got your hands deep in a cadaver, you're now going to deliver a baby, possibly some sort of hand wipe or something might be appropriate. But at the time, huge step. No, no idea that there were bacteria, no idea that disease was caused by that. This was at the time of miasmas, when people genuinely believed that a foul smell was what caused disease, which made sense because a lot of the disease ended up with foul smells from either cholera or lots of people dying in slums. You go to a nice part of town, no miasma. So even then, we can not mock the logic, but the logic was there. There was nothing unsound about the thought that bad smell disease, no bad smell, no disease. It must be the bad smell. Well, there's this invisible thing that no one can see that apparently kills you. I mean, there were lo lots of other reasons why people would become ill. They had offended the gods. They were sinful. This idea of miasma, this bad smell. Um, a number of other reasons obviously fixed in with the socio-political -polit and everything else would be reasons why that was far better than invisible things that be cleaned away with water. Far better that you pay a priest lots of money to absolve you of sins and that might make you better. The chemicals he was using, chlorine, which is still used today, hyperchlorites, bleach, kills bacteria, also damages us, so you have to do, use it at a low enough concentration to kill them. He suffered a nervous breakdown, largely because of people just not believing him, but also there were a number of different things to do with the politics of the time. He went for jobs, and because, again, I say, he was apparently a very shy individual. Other people got the jobs that he felt he deserved, and gradually he some people suggest it might have been sort of a, a neurological disorder or it might have been Alzheimer's, but he suffered a mental breakdown, was committed to an asylum, where apparently, for some reason, he was beaten by guards, 
suffered damage internally and died of, ironically, sepsis, died of a blood infection with bacteria at 47. So it's, it's a very bleak ending to someone who has changed to a degree by inspiring others. And he's not the only person, but he's certainly the one, because of this bleak ending, that always sticks in the mind that you can make huge differences. You don't, it's not necessarily the people who are the most famous. This is someone who isn't lauded perhaps as much as um, Pasteur and the like. But in Hungary, I mean, the main university is Hungary is the Semmelweis University. So now, after he died in an asylum at the age of 47, now he's lauded as a hero.